Glasgow, a city which has been placed on the map for more reasons than one. The city is full of people from all walks of life here to learn more about Glasgow's history. A massive contributor to Glasgow's wealth in the 1900s is that of the shipbuilding industry. We spoke to a retired marine plumber to find out more about him and his job. My name is Jim Moore. I was an apprentice in the shipyards. I joined Upper Clyde Shipbuilders in 1970. They certainly pulled down a lot of the old shipyard yarrows are going to be pulling down the big sheds that they initially built the ships. I don't think they'll be launching too many more ships there. It was certainly a government-based thing, you know what I mean? It was, uh, they'd, way back then, they would orders for £90 million pounds worth of ships. They needed £6 million pound to keep the company going, and the government refused to do that. They were going to shut the yards, hence the upper clad shipbuilders decided they would work on and finish the ships that was in order. So 40 years later, still shipbuilding on the Clyde. Well, it's been a big employer for Glasgow. It's not just the actual workers in the shipyard, it's all the ancillary workers, you know, the make, people that make the engines, they make the boats, and a lot of that was in and around Glasgow. It was a, a big economy in the, the areas that the, the shipyards were in. The shopkeepers that depended on the workers for no going out for their lunch and things like that. Normally we just played football in the circle, best part of the year, you know what I mean? It was now. So we just played either, initially we played in the yard and then that was frowned upon too many accidents and broken ankles and things because we had precarious football grounds, you know what I mean? We'd play on the walkways of crans, underneath crans and things, so people were falling off and hurting themselves, so we end up we'd get outlawed and had to go outside the yard. I worked in there when it was the, the dry docks. They will do something like that. Someday, someday they'll own that and they'll just be waiting for the right price to sell it. That was an adventure when you were in the shipyards. You'd, the ship would go to the dry docks and that was you outside your yard. So it was a, a wee adventure. The architecture of Glasgow, both old and modern, is also a reason Glasgow attracts so many tourists every year. Nowadays you've got so many tourists looking into the history of Glasgow. To me, modern day Glasgow is now but to like somebody who's like 70 years old, it was a completely uh, different place compared to now. People put, you know, their, so much effort into like building these places and then nowadays, you know, they're just completely forgotten. And you don't really realise, you know, what, how much effort was put into it, like how much work, how many hours, you know, was put into creating that. And to me, that's sort of the similarities between a modern day skyscraper and an underground station that's long since abandoned. Not only does Glasgow offer new and exciting places to visit, but it also holds hidden and secretive abandoned places, such as the Botanic Underground Railway. You've got all these secret places that, you know, people discuss, you know, uh, people make YouTube videos out of, you know, it's like, there's an attention towards it, towards Glasgow, and it's just any other city that has these hidden places. It's sort of like a scavenger hunt, you know, trying to look for you know, these places that were significant in history now, in this like modern day in Glasgow, they're unheard of. Nothing's ever new, nothing's ever now. You know, it's either going to be built or else it's going to be forgotten in the past. You can definitely tell from seeing all these buildings in Glasgow, you know, you've got the Hydro and then you've got somewhere like the Belgrove Hotel. Two vastly different places, but uh, you know, like, through their architecture and just their significance, their history. However, at one point, they were pretty much the exact same. At one point, they are considered new. Glasgow's changed a lot, but it's changed for the better. Everything, everything changes, it's predominantly for the better, you know.